Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Spill the Tea. I'm your host, Keisha Sayre, joined by my lovely co-host, Nicole Gurley. Yes, and we have some fantastic people joining us today. For those of you that are not familiar, we are based in Orlando, Florida, working for Orange mm -hmm. County Public Schools. And so we have some of our college and career specialists from OCPS. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce them. And then we're gonna get into a little conversation about what seniors should be doing in the second half of the year. So without further ado, I'm gonna start off with representing Lake Nona. We have Maxie Harmon with us. And yeah. then all the way over at Oak Ridge High School, we have Mercedes Gittens. Hi. And if you have any snowbirds that are familiar with this lovely area of Winter Park, representing Winter Park High School, we have <laughs> Elisa Mora. Go oh, Wildcat! <laughs> <laughs> so these ladies work with our seniors at our high schools. And if you're not familiar with our high schools, each high school has a college and career specialist. And these are the people that really help our students get to that next level. So we called upon them for their expertise to just give us a little a little tea on what our seniors should do in order to get through and get to that next level. So ladies, thank you again for joining us. And we're gonna start off with the, the big question, all right? We have our seniors, they're preparing for that next level. What are some of the big things that you see the seniors do that they just fall off? They start getting senioritis, in the second half of the year, what are some things that you um, try to tell the students to do to break themselves out of that? I would say, um, especially for a lot of stu students who are applying to schools and they are waiting to hear back, that's when I see a lot of that downhill spiral. So just trying to keep the kids as motivated as possible with um, just positive affirmations. Hey, you can do it, you put in the work, let's just be patient. Let's work on some other stuff in the meantime until we do hear back from those schools. So when you do hear back, we'll be ready to rock and roll. We're trying to make our decision. So just trying to keep them positive and working on the financial part of keeping them in school through scholarships. How about you, Elisa? I agree. And I think uh, in terms of what can I do now that I'm in that waiting game, the key is going to be scholarships, FAFSA, Bright Futures. Um, a lot of students have kind of put off uh, getting all that done. And this is the perfect time because they do have a lull while they're waiting for decisions to come through. Mm -hmm. um, for our students that are still undecided or are thinking, I'm just going to start at one of the technical schools or the two-year colleges, this is a great time to work on your application. Um, just because you're going to hear back from them pretty quickly that you're accepted doesn't mean that you should put it off because there's always yes. those little details that you may be um, required, like documents that you may be required to submit. And that takes some time. And now that we do have that law, we have that law too. So we can help you um, more individually um, as you're working through all those little emails that you're gonna get asking you for additional paperwork, residency documentation, et cetera. And even those that are applying, Elisa, to Valencia or Orange Technical College or anything like that now could also be playing the scholarship game. So whether you're yes. waiting and or waiting to apply, whether you're waiting for a decision or waiting to apply, they can also be working on the scholarship portion as well. Most definitely. And I think for our schools, um, a lot of the times when we get those local scholarships, it's right around this time. Mm -hmm. Right. What about you, Maxie? you have any words of advice for those schools? <laughs> I, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, in addition, there are still schools that have application deadlines that are still coming. So I'm still encouraging students to continue to apply. We've worked really hard this last month to remind students we're closed for two weeks over winter break. Yes. So if you need to request transcripts, letters of recommendation, let's get those done so that you're not caught in a, in a difficult situation over winter break. So still encouraging students to apply. And then I also have a set of students coming in that have received their first rejection of their life and that they haven't been accepted to maybe a UCF. And so it's, it's helping them understand that this is not the end of the world. It is, it is going to be okay. Um, helping them build that confidence back up and encouraging them continue to apply. 
Uh, I have some students that have applied to institutions that have been accepted and maybe it wasn't their first choice, but they feel a sense of relief knowing there is a place for me and there may be a slightly different plan and, and you know, there's more than one way to get to that final goal. So just continuing to be their cheerleader and, and ensuring that they have what it takes to get to that next level. Yes. Yeah, it's probably hard for you guys being at the schools because some are getting accepted, some are not. They're with their friends, they're yeah. in classes, mm -hmm. some are excited, some are not, you know, but just trying to find that right fit for them and letting them know, like you said, Maxie, that there's somewhere out there for them and mm -hmm. there's hope somewhere. Yes. When you when you have those students that come to you and you know they're a little defeated, um, what are some things that you do with those students? Um, you know, uh, because we know we have those students that are shooting for the stars and mm -hmm. bless them, they should. You know, okay, I want to go to Yale and they didn't get in. What should be their next step? So, so I think part of motivating the students to. Um, making sure that they understand that they're, that they, you know, give them the real expectations, the goals, the numbers necessarily, but also have helped them reflect since I had one young man specifically mm -hmm. that came in and had no idea what to write his essay about and just felt like I'm not good enough. Why should I do this? Why? And I said, well, let's just talk. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you're passionate about. And so through conversation, I realized that he belongs to one of our, our clubs, our NASA club, and they receive information from the Space Coast every time there's a launch, this data that they are called to interpret and analyze. And so when he joined this club, he realized that they weren't using a, a successful system to process this information. So he created a new system, a spreadsheet that now the government has purchased and is using to, mm -hmm. and I looked at him like, a oh, that's pretty amazing, okay? Yeah. So sometimes it's just sitting with them and letting them open up a little bit to get a little more insight on, on what they're doing because sometimes they underestimate how great they are. Now, does that mean you're gonna get into your number one institution problem? Maybe, maybe not, but there is a place for you and, and just kind of encouraging them to pick up the pieces and move on and focus on the positive, focus on all of the good things you've done and don't let this one or two negative bring you down because you're more than just acceptance to an institution. I agree. It's a great time to reflect um, where, they, where they were, where they are now, the skills that they have gained going through this process, whether or not they have been accepted and how we can move forward. And I always tell kids, you know, this is a great life learning lesson. When you get to school, things are not going to go as planned. So what are you going to do when you reach that hurdle? So I think for some kids, they're so used to just giving up. So we do a really good job of saying, hey, like Max, he said, talk to me, tell me what's going on. How can we move forward? Let's figure out a plan B. Because I think some of the kids think it's only plan A. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And so just some self-reevaluation, some academic reevaluation as well, because things could have changed from where the kids started um, to now, but I think it's just super important for them to keep going. We have to teach them to keep going, keep going. And then eventually I tell the kids, what's meant for you will be for you. And this is I, I, I agree this with is you. And I think um, one of the things that we need to do is also for the students to shift their mindset. It's not, I was rejected. Um, a lot of times the universities want you, you meet the academic profile that they're looking for but there's physically just enough room for a specific number of students. So it's really about fit. And I think um, as Mercedes and Matthew were saying, it's about finding your fit. And remember, it's not just your academic fit, it's also your social fit and it's also your financial fit. Um, you know, we, we reach for the stars, but we have to keep our feet on the ground and find schools where we're gonna be comfortable and happy without breaking the bank um where we're comfortable socially and where we find our people um and sometimes the students have this mindset um where it it has to be this school because this is what everybody else is doing or this is what mom and dad told me to do or i know somebody who does this as opposed to really exploring is this really what i want mm -hmm. um and so this is a good time to to reflect on that and to think about maybe take a second tour go look at the schools where you were accepted call the department of the office um, of the major that you're interested in and start asking questions. Go on their website to see the research that they're doing. If it's 
you know, for example, something in the science field or even in music um, and, and really go a little bit deeper into why you have applied to these schools. And if you were accepted, is this school really going to be a fit for you? That's a great. So, um, Alisa, what do you think, though, especially now, even though COVID is kind of on the tail end of being able to go places and stuff. What about those kids that don't financially have the money to start visiting these schools? What do you kind of recommend for those kids to be doing now to find out if a school is where they want to go? So one of the great things that happened as a result of COVID, if there's any, you know, uh, silver lining, is that almost all the universities have created vir virtual tours on YouTube. Um, there's a website called Campus Reels where you can actually see the school from the eye of another student that's attending there. Um, and there's just so, so much information out there um, that you can that you can have access to. In fact, I know that um, one of our OCPS offices, the Office of um, Minority Achievement mm -hmm. Office, they have the VR goggles that yeah, you right. can um, ask mm -hmm. them to come to your school and actually do a VR tour of Vanderbilt or, or some of the other universities. So that's a really good um, and an interesting way to visit a campus if financially it's difficult. Um, but students, especially if you are a minority, a lot of universities still do campus fly-ins um, and many of them are bringing them back. So that's a great opportunity for you to yeah. visit a school that maybe you hadn't thought of attending um, where you may be a good fit. Uh, and, and so looking and stopping by your college and career office, asking us about that, we'll, we're happy to do the research with you um, and explore those options. Anyone else with good suggestions? I've heard kids saying, believe it or not, TikTok. Oh. Wow. I stated that students who are currently at those schools do TikTok campus visits. And they said they feel like it's more relatable because it is a current student at that school giving you the ins and out and the good and the bad that sometimes they say you don't see um, in other platforms, especially if it is coming from that campus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have heard that a lot. And I was like, TikTok. And they were like, yes, yes oh. TikTok. Um, I know TikTok too, but TikTok <laughs> is not my not really my forte. So I'm glad to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, Maxie? And I also um, suggest to our students, since we're in Orlando, Florida, sign up for a, vir a campus visit at UCF. Yes, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's close. It's in our backyard. It gets you in there and understanding the language. It gets you to talk to admissions representatives. Uh, driving through the campus of UCF is very different from actually going and touring and entering yes. their, their buildings and the residence halls. And so if you can't afford to go too far, at least start with UCF and then prioritize where you can physically possibly go. And then you have something to compare it to. Because sometimes students, if, if you only visit the school of your dreams, let's say it's, you know, Emory Riddle, and you have never gone to visit any other institution, well, you don't have anything to compare it to. And mm -hmm. so start at least at UCF. UCF is a great institution, do a tour, it's in our backyard, they're free, and just get some experience and then take that experience to other, any other campus that you can visit. And of course, sign up for college visits. Those are, those are important as well. And that's a great, idea too, Maxie, with UCF is just so a student can experience what it's like on a big campus. Mm -hmm. So what is it like with thousands and thousands of kids right. walking around in large lecture halls? Like even if UCF isn't their dream, go to UCF to see what it like in Ohio State or <laughs> UF or yeah. FSU or one of those bigger schools, kind of at least what the feel of a large campus feels like. Definitely. And I'm going to piggyback on that. Um, Maxie, you are right. We are so lucky that we're in Orlando because we have a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So I would add to that, go to Rollins. Mm -hmm. And that way you can compare a smaller liberal arts school with a large um, research university. So you can see the vast difference between the two. Um, you're also comparing a public and a private school. Right. Um, and, and you're comparing the approaches. Um, and so I think that's a, a great idea. Great, great idea. Yeah. So we've touched upon you know, our kids going to college and, you know, maybe some disappointment or just refocusing. What about those students that, you know, they're saying, look, I just, I don't know what I really want to do. So I just want to work. Um, 
you know, or they just simply go, I don't know. Um, my mom says I could stay on the couch for probably a month after I graduate. What do I do now? So how would you guys help those guys? You know, are there any resources or, you know, good directions for them to go into to help them find their way? Maxie, we'll start with you. Okay. And, and those are tough situations because I think there's a lot of pressure for our, our young people, our young students, young adults to know what they want to do for the rest of their lives when many of us as adults truly don't know that. And so when I get a student to come in, in my office with a parent especially and they're un, unsure, I just let them know it is absolutely okay. Here are some of the resources we have. We have information for recruiters. The military isn't for everyone, but it is a great place for many. And some don't even think about the benefits of, of starting in the military, getting some experience in a career field, whether that's the one that you do for the rest of your life or not, some discipline, some structure, because a lot of our students um, need a little more structure and discipline. Also, we um, discuss options at Valencia or at a state college. Uh, maybe start with just general education classes and give yourself some time to figure out if college is what you want and maybe what you want to study. Some of the accelerated skills training programs that are out there, Orange Technical College, you know, there's there's many different options. So sometimes it's sharing some of the options and letting them know it's okay if you don't want to go to college. Because I think our title alone sometimes scares students away. And I, I do like to let students know off the bat, I believe in college. I went to college. I had a great time, but I also understand it's not for everyone. And Going to college doesn't equal your successful necessarily. Mm -hmm. You find what your passion is, what you want to do. Money will come. You know, it's more important to find what you really want to do and what you enjoy. And so making sure that they're aware of some of those options out there, apprenticeship programs. Um, I had a young man that came in the other day that says, I don't want to go to college. I just need a, something that I can do so I can get a job right away that pays well. And I was like, well, okay, let's take a look at the apprenticeship programs. Let's take mm -hmm. a look at and he left with lots of information to think about, but at least he knows it's okay and nobody's judging me because I don't want to go to college. It's absolutely okay. Awesome. Anyone else want to add in? Yeah, I think um, something that we, that we see happen is that the students, um, especially if they're wondering, if they have a lot of uncertainty in their lives, they're trying to figure out I don't have any money to go to school, whether it's a technical school or a two-year or four-year university. Um, so I, a lot of times I say, you know what, let's start by completing the FAFSA. The FAFSA is a free application for federal student aid, and it allows us to see whether you're going to qualify for some money so that you can uh, pay for your college education. Because um, a lot of times they, they have that dream, but it's intangible. They don't, they can't actually see it happen, especially um, if, they're, if they know that their home is um, not financially stable. So let's start with completing the FAFSA and completing the Bright Futures um, application so that we can see if there is some money for you out there. And then, um, and then we'll go from there. Because uh, a lot of times, especially if they're just focused on graduating, which happens to a lot of seniors mm -hmm. right now, I'm, you know, like I'm just in survival mode. And then when I get to do graduation, then I'll start focusing on what I'm going to do. Um, after high school. So, so let's do the FAFSA and just keep some open doors. And then when you're ready, then we'll come and explore those options as well. Cool. So now you have your kids that are, are going to college. You have your kids that are going to a career or maybe apprenticeship. Here's the big one that I get from parents all the time. I'm sure you guys have maybe as parents, you may have seen this too. What next? Some of our kids don't know how to boil rice. <laughs> you know, maybe they don't know how to do their laundry. Um, would I want each of you guys to give me like three tips you would give to seniors on preparing for after high school? What should they be preparing themselves for to be ready once they leave those doors? I had a conversation with some students, whether they're going off to college or staying home, is learning how to cook. Mm -hmm. I tell students, this is this soft skill per se, it's probably going to be one of the most beneficial things for you. Yeah. If you're going off to campus. I said, because you're not gonna have the luxury to buy food 
unless it comes from the cafeteria. <laughs> you have to find ways to prepare meals for yourself so that you can eat. And the kids at first looked at me and I said, but if you think about it, you can also um, use the same skill set to help others within your, your dorm area. Um, even for the kids who are not going off to college, you still have to eat. Because I remind students all the time, after May 11, 2022, you're going to be a for real adult. <laughs> so no one is going to say, hey, are you hungry? Did you have enough to eat? Mm -hmm. So you need to start something as simple as cooking, which a lot of them don't know how to do. You need to start preparing those, those small skills that you think are useless for the real world. So one of my things would be, I tell kids, you got to learn how to cook. Great. Cooking for sure. Yes. Maxie, what do you got? Well, and I also let students know um, you have to learn how to use the phone for other than just texting and TikToking. Um, you will yes. need to make phone yes. calls. You yes. will need to talk to someone in customer service. You mm -hmm. will need to speak loudly, clearly. Um, so teaching them also those skills. When I have meetings with families, I address the student. The parents are there and I'll glance at them, but my conversation is with the student right. because they're the ones that need to know how to write a proper email, you know, how to address um, an envelope. Many of them don't know how to do that. So it's just those basic, basic communication skills that the, you know, we're, we're fortunate. We have the technology and I enjoy it. I do, but I also am okay about picking up the phone and calling and, and they're sometimes very terrified to call someone <laughs> uh -huh. so it's learning to do that you will be doing that for the rest of your life yes. so we might as well learn now yeah Elisa if all you're doing is ramen noodles those freshman 15 are gonna happen quick. <laughs> so yeah definitely learn to cook um I think um I would add getting a checking account and learning yes. how to budget um, we're used to having things happen online and just, you know, looking at our account. But I think um, actually learning that is going to be helpful. Um, you know, a lot of our students still don't drive. And I don't know why that's a thing now, um, that students just don't really care about getting their license yet. Yeah. Um, Uber. So I would definitely say, you know, have one for that one. Um, it is, it is very strange. It, yeah. just, that was the first thing that I wanted to do as soon as I turned 16, my Absolutely. appointment was a DMV, but there's just not that, that interest anymore. Um, so get a license or, or an ID for sure. Mm -hmm. um, know your health information. A lot of students, um, they don't really, like they don't know their social security number, which I think is something that as they work through the application process, yeah. they realize, oh, like I need to know this. Um, and, um, and, and knowing kind of their health history, their doctor's phone number, so that, so that they know who to call, as Maxie said, mm -hmm. if they have certain situations. I think one thing, I don't know if you guys have been seeing this, sometimes we ask them to sign something and they look at us like we have five heads and it's like, <laughs> yes, you need a signature. <laughs> uh, have you guys been catching that too? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, a signature or knowing their address by heart kids you got to know where you live <laughs> their phone numbers they have to look yes. up their phone numbers yes you are so right um i don't know if you guys know but um i still have students that type with two fingers we've been a digital district for five years yeah. and there's actually an app on the launch pad where you can practice learning how to type properly mm -hmm. um so that's one thing that i'm telling my students all the time i'm like you're gonna need to type fast when you're in in the real world and you want to be able to save time so same thing with practicing a signature did you guys ever remember like spending hours yeah. coming up with the best signature do i squiggle here <laughs> squiggle there <laughs> it's so funny when you see them sometimes like they're still like babies they may be adults parents but yeah. they're still they're still babies we've got to yeah. show them the way and one now, other thing if i can add is setting up a professional email Yes. yes. And setting up your voicemail on your phone. <laughs> so we do, when we meet with kids to do their post-secondary um, meetings as a group, we do say, tell the kids to take a moment. If I was to email you, you know, what would your email be? You know, if I was to call your phone, am I going to hear music playing in the background? Or have you set up your name? What's the likelihood someone would leave you a message 
if it's not set up and then kids start to think and make those connections. So I would say a personal email, professional personal email. Oh. Sorry. Don't worry, we're, we're real time people. This is what happens at a school. <laughs> Is that it? The the real emails? Uh, yes, it shouldn't be like party girl number one, mm. you know, Megan the Stallion fan in the house. <laughs> no, none of, none of yes. that. But congrats to Megan for graduating. <laughs> That's right. And I would have reading the email and reading it twice. Uh -huh. You know, it's the holidays. Read it twice um, because a lot of times when you're receiving emails from a professional organization, whether it's a university or a job. Mm -hmm. it's packed with information and sometimes you just have to process it um, mm -hmm. and read it a couple of times to make sure that you are going to answer it appropriately and that you're going to do what they're asking you to do. Yes, definitely. Wow. So we've had such great things, scholarships, mm -hmm. thefts of time, mm -hmm. finish applications, finding the right fit, go visit campuses, mm -hmm. Go online, go learn check out cook. everything, learn how to cook, <laughs> checking accounts, everything we have, ladies. So while we close on up here, what are the last bits of advice that we have for our seniors right now that are looking towards graduation? Maxie? Is, oh, Mercedes, you're fine. Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. It's never too late to come see us. Our doors yes. are always open. Guidance is always open. We are here to support you. We're here to support your family. Great, thank you. I would say hang in there right now. It's a stressful time, it's busy, but find time to enjoy life. Enjoy your family, because probably at this time, right around next year, you're gonna be somewhere else. You won't be able to enjoy those little things that sometimes you see as annoying that your mom or dad or little brother or sister do. You'll miss those things. So do what you need to do, prioritize, but always find time to have a little fun. Enjoy your family and friends. Love yes. it. We all need to know that. Yes, um. we all need to do that. <laughs> Elisa? Don't forget us. We want to hear about you. We want to hear about you after you graduate. We want to know your successes. We want to know your questions. Um, and, uh, and, and know that, you know, as Mercedes said, we are here for you. Um, whether you're finished with the process or still starting the process, um, and, and we know that it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy time and you have some changes coming up in your life. Um, but just take it day by day. Sometimes you can look ahead and sometimes you just need to survive the next hour. Um, just, um, grant yourself some grace. I really like that thing. Just yeah. give yourself, um, some time to process and, and figure it out. Can I, can I look till tomorrow and next week or do I just need to get through the next hour? And that's perfectly okay. Definitely. I love all that. Living life to the fullest people. And if you're a student in uh, high school or you're about to start high school, just remember whether you're at Lake Nona, Oak Ridge or Winter Park, there's a college and career specialist at each of our high schools, including these ladies that will be able to help you out, whether it's you know, you're a senior and you're about to go, or maybe you're, you know, sophomore, junior, just trying to figure out what direction to go into. If you're a freshman, we know you need a lot of help. It's all right. We got love for you too. But make sure you go and see your CCS. They are there to help you along with your guidance counselors. And thank you guys so much today for joining us. Uh, again, OCPS is represented well with these ladies. We were, thank we're thankful that you were part of this group today. And if you like what you see and you know you want to see more of it, go ahead and like us on our YouTube channel. But for myself and Nicole, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, Have a good you. one. Thank you.